so I'm back with Jamila, long time no see. You're welcome. <laughs> and I'm also here with Dr. Diaz, who you guys will know who that is very soon. Um, and we're going to talk about like, you know, like pretty much how we met and how we met and why we met. She's an ENFJ, like me. Yay. Hey. And as for you guys who do not know, fiance um, is an ISFP. Um, and so Ooh, yes. we were both, that's right. I know, yeah. why? Yes. <laughs> we were both actually summoned, we were both actually uh, requested. That's deep, to, right. so, that's deep right there. Thank you. <laughs> we were both requested actually to attend um, a conference that Dr. Diaz was holding, and it was amazing, honestly. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to help introduce um, what exactly this vision that Dr. Diaz has. Divorce and deliverance or the D&D &D conference. Yeah, you can actually okay. take over from here. Absolutely, it just, it's just the focus is prevention, healing and hope. Mm -hmm. Prevention, nice. healing and hope. Um, dealing with, obviously the feature would be the separated and divorced people, but it's not all about them, but of course that would be healing and hope. Um, it also features on single people and mm -hmm. preparation and prevention so that in your choice is knowing who you are and that's where the personality piece is going to come in but mm -hmm. learning who you are, becoming comfortable in your own skin, um, knowing your likes and dislikes so that you can, once you get yourself together, when it's time for you to be partnered with someone, you guys can journey together. Um, and you know, you can avoid some of the pitfalls that others obviously had to experience on their way to divorce and separation, that sort of thing. So, and married couples, we want to help them to continue to encourage them to focus on their marriage and to be happily married, yes, yes. <laughs> not just to be in happily a situation, married. right? Thriving, just not be in a situation, surviving. right? Not a situation, <laughs> but a marriage. Right, happily. right, right. How exactly did you come up with this vision? Interesting, interesting question. Long story, but I'm going to make it real short. First of all. Um, I was once married, um, now I am divorced. Um, went through a process, a long process, but it involved looking at my situation, learning from my mistakes from my past, looking at myself and what I contributed or did not contribute to the relationship, mm -hmm. and just, you know, healing, on a path to healing. And, and on that journey, I just learned some things, and it motivated me to want to help others. And I can recall, because I'm in a religious community um, where they frown on divorce, like yeah. most religious communities. And so, of course, it was a stigma associated with it. Um, some people, they become blackballed. Uh, you know, they're told they can't do certain things because of the situation, because of their status. And so, I don't know, it just just made me angry, mm. you know? It made yeah. me upset because of what other what I saw other people were going through, not just myself, because I was over it. I was almost to the point where, even if I didn't marry again, I was cool with that. Just mm. being single, I was just really content with that. But I saw how other people were made to feel, and so it motivated me to want to do something. And one of the things, I know it's not, not gonna be overly religious, but one of the things that I did was I sought God. I said, you know, what can I do and then he dropped the idea in my mind, divorce and deliverance. I said, okay, what did that entail? And then he began to tell me, you know, you need to focus on counseling. Mm. You need to focus on life coaching. You need to focus on, you know, again, empowering people so they can avoid that path. And unfortunately, a lot of churches or religious circles and people in general, we're not taught how to be husbands. We're not taught how to be wives. Mm. You know, growing up, we have our issues, our backgrounds, our paths, and everything that's associated. And we bring it to this marriage. We don't have really good premarital counseling. Some of us even you know we just don't have it and we get into the situation and we're just trying to make the best of it and oftentimes it just it fails 50% mm -hmm. of marriages they fail so looking at the statistics if you have this type of situation where you have an event that's annually that focuses on empowering people with information and tools practical tools that you can incorporate in your day-to-day -day, it's going to bless you and it's going to help you to make better choices going in yeah this is our second annual conference that was actually literally yesterday yes <laughs> um, <laughs> but last year God spoke to me and he, t he, he expand the vision and so I'm like okay so Lord what are we gonna do and he said incorporate something for the singles I said okay so I was in my head kind of you know trying to figure out who would be a good presenter some people came to mind and then all of a sudden as I was driving back from a retreat somewhere God brought Denzel to my mind and as I was driving I started screaming like yo yes God I knew exactly what God wanted he wanted us to focus on personality types mm -hmm. and so we tapped him and he was like yes and I was like yes and so here we are <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So Dr. Diaz actually 
She watches my videos. I'm a uh, fan. Oh, yeah, now you're also a friend. Cool. Your family. Um, she commented on the ENFJ problems, paradoxes, and patches video. Um, for those of you who haven't seen that, you can go and check that out. Um, but she, like I said, she's an ENFJ herself, mm -hmm. and she commented a very encouraging. Actually, one of I read all of the comments that you guys leave, wow, and I respond to all of them. It's and <laughs> yeah, I, I I love it. I love it. you guys. Just keep them coming. Like honestly, mm -hmm. and your comment, like I said, is everything is genuinely said was one of the most appreciated comments that I've ever received. Wow. Um, because in the video I shared, you know, about like how I would had to take an extra year in college, you know. Um, right now I have two classes left that I'll be finishing um, this upcoming January, like that semester. So it's like, praise God for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's kind of like discouraging, you know, like I know like everybody like, has like, their own pace. But, you know, especially like when you're African, then, you know, like there's so much pressure on you mm -hmm. to like achieve like Absolutely. at a certain time, you know, money and, you know, stuff like that. But when she told me... Um, she commented and she she left this very encouraging comment about like how it took her like she had to, you had to do an extra year mm -hmm. of college as well like yeah you know, yeah and could you just like remind us like what exactly like the encouragement you said for other people who might even be out there struggling with the same thing right really um, well I have a doctorate mm -hmm. in educational leadership but obviously I started somewhere after mm -hmm. I graduated from high school I went off to college and. Went off to college like most college students and took advantage of the opportunity, partied a little bit too much, um, and then got overwhelmed with a lot of other personal choices, which is in my ebook, Celibacy in the City. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to read that. Put in the link that. in the bio Absolutely. description. Be sure to check that out. Absolutely, some of the things I went through. Um, but nevertheless, um, I just, you know, it just came a point where I had to just do it. You know, my time was extended and it was discouraging, but, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't about the time it took, but it's about the goal being met. Mm. I set a goal and I meant it. I met that goal and so as a result, I achieved my goal, which is the doctorate education eventually. But it took time and sometimes, you know, we learn from our mistakes and it makes us better. And so I tried to encourage him to do that, not to be discouraged. It's not the time because we get caught up in time, you know, yes. we gotta, it has to be done at a certain time. But yeah. it also have to be done it according to God's will and purpose and plan for our lives. Yeah, so. and that was so encouraging for me because to know that not only was somebody else going through like the same thing, but then on top of that, they're the same type as I am. And then on top of that, like she's so successful. She's such an ad she's such an admirable woman. Like you guys, honestly, have no idea. <laughs> We've been talking about a lot of different things, and I just had to like you know introduce her to you guys. I just had to introduce this vision to you. The vision, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, like, you know, it's still growing. It's still like, Absolutely. you know, a baby, it's still being catered. Mm -hmm. But for those of you who can see the value, I just wanted you guys to be able to have the opportunity to see her heart behind it, which mm -hmm. is very genuine, um, very pure. Um, like I said, yesterday was the second one, right? Yes, the second and, one. Yeah, and that's when, so after she had commented on that video of mine um, sometime last year, then we became Facebook friends, and then that's when she had the revelation, like, oh, when Denzel can come, you know, to this event, I was totally on board, because why wouldn't I want to help save families, you know? Oh, um, oh yeah, it's, I'm, I'm so honored. And then on top of that, you know, she needed somebody to help sing, you know, with the musical Absolutely. guests and everything. And Jamila oh, came nice. in clutch with sing. that. How was that? It was nerve-wracking at first because <laughs> I've actually never led worship by myself before. I, I either like have people with me or yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it was nerve-wracking. I'm the type of person, especially if you know anything about personalities, mm -hmm. I, I know myself and I know my potential and so if I see that it can be a 10, then if it's anything less than a 10, then I kind of like failed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Denzel was saying, and Denzel doesn't like just say things just the same. I'm glad you know that. <laughs> um, that like I actually did really good and I could tell that people oh, yes, were absolutely. blessed and everything. And so as long as I, you know. I tried to back you up as much yeah, as I Yeah, she I backed me up. So <laughs> that was helpful too. I was just out there by myself. And we used a track on top of Absolutely. that that's like yeah. the big, if like you know how like some yeah. rappers like they'll go and then they have to like play the track and then nobody's really like hype whatever mm -hmm. it takes a lot to be able to 
still get the spirit moving like yeah. you know while using a track not like a live band and everything so you really like did do a great job absolutely and god was there yeah he was present and i think he blessed you in that moment mm -hmm. too yeah so definitely yeah a win. it was a win it was win. it was definitely a win and we had three different present three yes and then we had a was, seminar in the morning session or right. the early afternoon we mm -hmm. had our four singles which was denzel mm -hmm. uh in person in the flesh <laughs> and then we had uh, married couples which was dr brand I'm sorry, soon to be Dr. Brand, and also our Dr. Savage for our married couples. So, mm -hmm. or sorry, divorce and divorcees, mm -hmm. apostle. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was great messages all around, like learning about like how to better relate to people and all of that. For my segment, like I said, uh, it had to do with personality types and you know how mm -hmm. learning your personality, like knowing your own personality, as well as also knowing your partner's personality. Um, you can become more self-aware to be able to operate better in a relationship. At the same time, you know, you can know your partner's personality type to be able to better operate in that relationship as well. Um, and in knowing that, that could actually save like a lot of um, marriages. Absolutely. Um, sometimes even before the marriage starts. One example could be like you said that you and your husband um, we had gotten together Absolutely. and I do believe you know like you know God does everything like for a reason like you know Maybe you had to go through this to be able to now be to use this Knowledge that you've now gained to be able to help so many other people that you're going to be in the future like with this everything starts off like kind of like small but like I, I Really feel like I see the vision that you have like in coming years more and more people are going to be coming to this conference and more and more families are going to be saved and you had to go through this you know relationship with your husband yeah. in order to get that knowledge to be able to save so many other relationships yeah he'll take your mess mm. won't mm. even he yes, he'll will. make it a mess that's that's God. that's it that's yeah it. exactly he, identified that your <laughs> husband is actually ISTJ and mm. you guys <laughs> have heard me complain about Woo! the type here and there like I said in, in a more like subjective manner like ignorance is bliss I had no idea yeah like we were she oiled in the water. water for those of you who don't know the, the ENFJ and the ISTJ are in socionics they're literally known as conflict types mm. um, and before I even knew about typology I always knew like uh, I just don't get I have like friction with certain people and then when I learned about typology it's like wow every single one of you are ISTJ then I'm thinking like, maybe it's just me but then you go online and you see like Megan Lavota complaining about ISTJs and then you see like other ENFJs like even on Twitter like mm, yeah I don't really get along with them and the ISTJs complain about us too mm -hmm. and it doesn't make either one of us like bad there's no such right. thing as a bad personality Absolutely. type it's just oh it would take a lot more work or a lot more understanding to be able to make this work Absolutely. as opposed to like some types where you just seamlessly get along a lot better like, so like these two right here <laughs> perfect <laughs> just meeting you for the first time i'm like yo you guys are like perfect for each other oh wow Seriously. thank you so much <laughs> there's just certain types that are ideal but as i like to say every type like you know you can always get along with like every type, you know, you just have to be able to put in work and maybe, I mean, who knows if um, her ICJ husband had been introduced to personality typology and she had been like, you know, in the past and they had the genuine like will, like we want to make this work. Right. So I'm going to try and understand how you operate. Oh, you're an FE dominant. No wonder. Plus you're operating with NI. I don't really like to operate with an eye, but now that I understand that you're, you operate in this way and God made you this way for a reason, I'm going to stop trying to shoot this down and instead embrace it. I'm going yeah. to understand your decision making process and try and meet you where you are. And in the same sense, she could do the same thing because it's not a one way street. No, not at you all. know, she would learn more about the ISTJ like, oh, this is why you act this way. Or this is why sometimes I think that you're probably doing this, you're probably doing that. And then in that case, now you're able to better understand him and you're better able to like relate to him and you know, like you're better you're better able to like understand like thought processes that he's having right. and have a just overall better communication. And that could have potentially like saved the marriage, you know, you never know. Absolutely. And also maybe it could have even helped them understand like even throughout the dating process, like 
No go. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, you know what? Now that I understand that you think in this way, it doesn't make you like a toxic person, but right. I just, I can see a lot of like ways that this will cause friction yes. in a committed marriage. And so maybe just maturely, it's best for us not to get married and Absolutely. not for us to like, you know, and so these are the kind of things that with her ministry, she's trying to save. She's trying now to, you Now you know, see the purpose for it to be given to singles? Exactly. And to ministries? Yeah. Absolutely. And then if you're already married, then like I said, it can help you understand your partner. It can Absolutely. help you understand your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, she, you said that you have an ENTP son. Yes. <laughs> and he's always like wanting to debate. He's mm -hmm. always wanting, you know, they're are stereotypically called the debater and like he's always like challenging things and that's that's how they think yeah and if she didn't know about personality types and you know it probably is still annoying especially being an enfj yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah my infj friend david is like that and it's still annoying <laughs> but um you know at the end of the day like you know like oh well you know that's his learning process yeah. and I give him space to be able to do that. Absolutely. And so in knowing these types, then you're able to, you know, give space to certain people. You're able to allow them to become more of who God created them to be Bingo. as opposed to like, you know, who you want them to be. Right. So that was also said. And then um, the elder brand, he spoke about like, you know, like the men's needs and the women's needs, you yes, know, like Dr. Harley, shout out. <sighs> that All was these great. books over here, you see, let me see, them over here. That's the books on Dr. Harley. Yeah, yeah. So you guys should check him out on um, Dr. Harley out on YouTube. Elder Brand, he went through a whole bunch of things, like, you know, like, that the woman may need, like, the five, I think it was five. He went through three, and then he gave the last two points, like, just directly um, for each one. Um, but he pretty much elaborated on the top three needs for women, um, which I'd have to definitely refer back to my notes because I'd want to say them like verbatim. Mm -hmm. But from what I remember, like, you know, like things like even like how like men, why they prefer like physical needs, like, you know, more like or like how like men like they're they're more visually uh, like they're more visual. So they need like attractiveness, like, you know, while like the woman needs like more connection, stereotypically mm -hmm. speaking and things along those lines. Emotional connection. Yeah. Right. And these were good to know. Because then now you might be like a wife thing like, oh, well, my, my man's a dog or, you know, like he's, mm. he's just always wanting this. It's like, well, no, it's not really true. This is just how as a man it is. And you might not be able to relate. And like, you know, as a, as a male, it's like, oh, my, 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 my wife always wants to like connect. You know, always <laughs> wants to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And it's like, well, I mean, you know, that's, that's like a need. And of course, you know both parties like both genders mm -hmm. they require each one but these are like top needs for each one so like every wife like requires sex to an extent you know we'd hope so right. and then every male every husband requires connectivity to an extent we would hope so mm -hmm. um but uh stereotypically or generally speaking according to statistics and everything males often require the more physical and you know uh, things along those lines like more often than the women would who prefer the more emotional you know things along those lines and in knowing something like that you're able to once again hold more space for your partner so this conference was really all about better understanding your partner mm -hmm. um, better understanding yourself, yourself so that when you get into a relationship or in the, in the relationship that you're already in now you're able to better operate in that relationship where do you see this like going in the future i know that you you're like me so <laughs> we think very far you know even if people like me oh you're crazy or whatever but like mm. in an ideal world and as idealists we're going to make this our ideal world right where do you see this going to well um, you know it's a mandate Mm. It's a mandate to that. It's going to continue until God says stop. And I think as long as there are marriages, as long as there are single people, as well as our feature group, it's going to be a need. The needs are going to be there. Mm. Um, so I do see this going on long term. I, I see it um, obviously expanding, the vision expanding and getting larger. People are going to eventually catch on mm. and see the need. And I think it's going to be a lot of healed folks that are be, going to go out and minister to other people that are broken. Mm. And that's what I see it. I kind of see 
you know, a cycle where people are getting what they need and they're going out and helping other people and it kind of going on until so I see it really expanding into something big. And you often talk about T.D. Jakes and his small beginnings and yeah. the Bible talks about the spies, not small beginnings. Right. And so, yeah, we're at the beginning stages, but I do see this being relatively grand. Yeah. You know, like Same here. Bishop T.D. Jakes has his Woman That Were Loose conferences uh, and all yeah. that other stuff. I do see it being and at And it started that with a small book that he didn't even know would sell out and he... He said that he used all of the money in his bank account wow. that he was going to use to buy a house Sounds to familiar. publish that book. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's a leap. Yeah. All of the money in his bank account mm -hmm. to publish that book. Yeah. And his wife was like, are you crazy? Oh, she said, yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> are you crazy? Like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, she probably did ask that to herself, like, yeah. are you crazy? But then, then she's like, all right, you know, she, she let him take that risk mm -hmm. and that dream and that vision. And he said he didn't even know how much it was going to like sell out. Wow. And it, it was a need that the people had. And That's this, good. this is why I said I wanted to highlight this. She, Dr. Diaz is not coming from, you know, a place of like selfishness, like, oh, I'm just trying to make money. I'm just yeah. trying to become famous and popular or whatever like mm -hmm. that. She genuinely wants to help families. Um, stay together. She genuinely wants to help couples stay together and to have such a selfless heart to have such a, a, a Mission and a vision to want to help other people because she could keep all of this advice You know to her own family, you know, the she funds, could absolutely the funds especially mm -hmm. like so many funds go into things like this You mm -hmm. know you we lost a sign on the way over there <laughs> you know? And we, we there was so much wow, money. even like getting us to come over oh my here God, and that's everything a whole like other she video. helped <laughs> yeah she could have used so much of that money even gas money even to keep us like to, to just keep it all to herself and have like a thriving family but instead she decided to extend this vision out to the world to invite you guys and i think that's kind of like where we're leading to now like this is going to be an annual thing right. so how do you like what types of things do you have to tell people who may be interested in coming next year? Okay, if you're definitely interested, we do have a website set up. So you can go to divorceanddeliverance.com. So that's divorce, the word and spelled out, and deliverance.com. Go there and subscribe there so you can just, you know, stay up to date on any type of emailers or whatever's going to be sent out. Um, we're in planning phases like we literally had the event yesterday um, so and I'm excited it was successful in my eyes God was there the content was rich the Spirit of God was there I was blessed so many things were confirmed people got I believe people got inspired people yeah. got confirmations from God and just to me was amazing so yeah. I'm grateful I've already started already thinking mm -hmm. about the next next year and what it's going to be it's probably going to be around august again august around the, um, next year 2019 mm -hmm. um so check out the website um if you want to email me if you have further questions um feel free to email again divorce and deliverance at gmail.com you can contact me there um and i also have a youtube too spreading truth ministry mm -hmm. um you can check me out on youtube as well so we're in development stages. If you want to know more, definitely check out the website because it has a, a detail about the mission and the commission. We're looking for more people to partner with us. We're looking for people that are in the field of counseling. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things, the core of it is counseling. Yeah, mm -hmm. life coaching. We need life coaching counselors. And I'm not trying to be biased, but you can be a, you can be a non-spiritual one, but we prefer people that are spiritually minded mm -hmm. or Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So thank you for being in this video with us. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share no, thank this you. vision with everyone. Thank you, I appreciate um, that. Even inviting me to begin with, like I said, I am I could not be That was God's doing, board. I just have to, <laughs> but I was on board with that, yeah, uh, for sure, yeah. definitely. I mean, when I first saw you, like I said, during that time in my life, you know, everyone heard about the personality types. I mean, if you've taken a psychology class, so mm -hmm. I was introduced to it actually during my undergrad years in college but you just kind of push that stuff as you said it's almost like the disney princess thing. You, know, you, don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't take it too seriously yeah. you like look at it and say oh, which, I know which harry potter house are you in <laughs> <laughs> so you don't take it too seriously so you just move on in life and then when i started kind of like i said investigating and, and just kind of checking and trying to figure out where i'm at and you know so you know what i i gotta find myself you know i said you know so i took the test and discovered that 
you know, what my personality type was. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I learned so much. I took it seriously. So I started, you know, looking up YouTube videos. And that's when I stumbled upon his channel. And so, um, and not only that, it motivated me to even get my children to, you know, they took mm -hmm. the test. And I began, and based upon their, also their behavior, mm -hmm. just to line up to make sure those, you know, the test is, like you said, yeah. the test is not necessarily, <laughs> necessarily accurate. Right. But in, in my case, because I kind of had a little bit of background myself, you know, researching and doing my own thing, mm -hmm. I, knew, I noticed that it was very much accurate. And I had my kids read it. And they're only 14 and 12 they're very smart mm -hmm. so they read it and they said even my son he's a debater he's like looking hey this is, this is spooky right here this is spooky uh, so it was just entertaining but it's amazing but anyway just led me on this journey and so i stumbled upon your channel and then from there like i said i just knew that it was great i let my kids watch your videos um and then i didn't really know exactly what your stance were in terms of religious and beliefs and faith and stuff like that mm -hmm. so when god brought me to you and i said it's got to be a reason other than <laughs> you know so i started looking more into the videos and i discovered that he was a christian i said oh see god knows what he's doing mm -hmm. i can trust him <laughs> and so yeah long story short i did connect with him i asked him he said yes and I'm so happy you came. I'm so happy that I had a chance to finally meet I'm you. Me too. Me and too. I'm telling you, and it's like God told me about this vision. He said that he would connect me with people that would be overly enthusiastic about this vision. And you have been everything and some. Oh. I'm telling you. And it's been, a, it was absolute a motivation. When I was like low and saying, oh my God, you know, trying to gather the people, do the marketing and tapping here and getting information, doing all the running. Every time I would connect with you, you'll be just so excited. And then it would help to boost my excitement back. Like, oh, I can't forget about the excitement part. And so it would just help to revive that. And so I do appreciate you guys for coming, making the sacrifices to get here. Again, long story, they were almost stranded at 3 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. at, at, a, at, a, at a station, a train station. It was rough, yeah. um, but we got through it. And everything happens for a reason. I believe and she that. was so calm when she came to get us, too. Like, we... It was such a, like, we were supposed to arrive in New York by 5.30 p.m. Mm. Instead, it would end up being, like, around 10. Then we couldn't even find the train that we were supposed to get on to, like, around 11. Wow. And then that train did not leave until 12.35 mm. and then, or 12.43 a.m. And then it, it skipped our stop. <laughs> so we... Oh man, like it, it was just a lot, and we ended up not getting back to the house till 4 a.m. It's like, oh, gotta present literally in a few hours, you know. <laughs> so it's just crazy. But you were so calm, you were so kind, you weren't like, how did you guys miss your stop? How did you know all of that? You were, you came out with the energy, exactly. you helped me, yeah. everything. Like I was, I was very happy, and you just made us feel like very comfortable, even here in this home and everything. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I really appreciate that. <laughs> True. So, my question for you She's is, so cute, isn't she? <laughs> what advice do you have for people who are divorced? Mm. Well, the advice, don't give up on life. Um, a divorce is very similar to a death because you're mourning... Mm obviously the concept of marriage because you entered into this covenant with great hopes that it would work out. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody enters into it thinking, oh, I'm going to get a divorce tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to so. get married. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, usually, not believers, you know what I mean? Because we, we understand the institution of it mm -hmm. and what the Bible says. So I feel like people that believe and understand the whole point of it really are really bummed out when it doesn't work out. Work mm -hmm. out. And so it's almost like, you know, you're mourning a death. You're mourning a loss. You're mourning the loss of who you became to be because you lose yourself in in this sense because you you're you're becoming one right according to the, to the scriptures you're becoming one flesh and so all of a sudden that is being severed that individual is being severed from you and so therefore you're having to come to know who you've become to be because obviously wow. your experiences they don't go away you become a different person and so now i mean to predating like during your single life you were one person and you grow through your experiences with this other person and that person is then severed from you and now you're having to discover well who am i now and where am i going to go so it's a lot of hopelessness a lot of helplessness that comes to you depression um a lot of anger rage it's, it's just a wide range of emotions that people go through trying to figure it out and there might be people that are having divorce parties I mean, you mm -hmm. know and they're excited but I think when you come to yourself and you realize that wow you know I didn't make a good choice and now I have to live with it some people just stay there so I just want to encourage those people that there is hope beyond your situation you are not your status mm -hmm. you know it was a moment in time and that's where God's grace comes in God is very gracious and he's very merciful and I would say there is hope beyond the situation 
you can live a life and live a life more abundantly, even while single. And who's to say? You may have someone else. God has may have someone else um, in store for you. But you have to work on yourself and you have to be real with yourself and honest about the part that you played. Even if it's, I chose this person. Mm -hmm. It's something that was in you and something that you were going through in that moment that allowed you to pick that person. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, it was a blot of brokenness that drew me to that person. And I wasn't like my full self. Because if I was my, I would have, I'm very analytical, like mm -hmm. our type. Yep. So I do mm -hmm. think things through. So I don't think I fully thought it through because there was some red flags. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes we ignore the red flags when Especially we're when you're in like relationships and we're and infatuated. That. And then there was some physical stuff that happened also that, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the things I love about you guys at a couple because you decided to wait mm -hmm. until marriage or there was some physical engagement that threw it out. Even though we were believers, let's keep it real, y'all. Not everybody. <laughs> You know, has the self-control and the discipline, you know, and we didn't have accountability partners and that sort of thing. So that's why I wrote the book, too, to inspire people to wait, because it can create a level of confusion and you don't have a level head. And now you're being ruled by your flesh and your emotions and it can throw you off your game. And so I just want to, you know, listen, it was an experience. This is something that happened to you, but it doesn't have to remain that way. You don't have to remain in that state. There's healing for you and there's hope. Come to the conference. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Come to the conference. It'll be great. Next year, follow the site. Uh, yes. you, I'll put the everything that you the need link to know below. in Absolutely. the description. So follow that link below. Stay up to date. Um, hit me up if you have any questions that you might have to ask her. Hit her up Please, directly. Feel like she feel more than free to email Absolutely. her. Like I said, I'm gonna provide the email information, all of that there. And lastly, I guess before we like hang up and everything. Do you mind praying for the, you know, singles, married, and even divorced for me to just close out? I don't mind. Awesome. Father, we just thank you for this time that we're able to share on this YouTube channel. We thank you for Brother Denzel and Sister Jamila. We just thank you, Father, for the conference, all that we experience in the conference, and how you've given us this vision, hallelujah, and how you've just given us the opportunity to be a blessing to the body of Christ and to those that want to, hallelujah, heal and be made whole. And so, Father, we just pray for the general audience, those that will watch this video, that you would just deal with them, Father God, that you would allow them to take their walk seriously enough to want to come and get the tools that they need to be the better version of themselves whether they be single whether they're married whether they are divorced or separated that they can come and just realize that they need this help that's this, this additional assistance to be the best version of themselves father I pray that you would lead them in the in our direction so that we can continue to minister to them in the name of Jesus we pray amen amen awesome thank you so much again <laughs> oh, uh, really appreciate it <laughs> And <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> done.